hi folks, it's E-Chip with Contentment. I hope you're doing well. I don't know if you can see her, but I've got Reba here keeping me company. She wants to know what's going on with the camera, don't you? Yeah, you know what's going on, don't you? Roscoe's over there. But I uh, thought I'd say hi. I don't have anything on the homestead new to report today. Um, working on a greenhouse, and we'll have a video coming up on that. It's proving a little challenging, but I think we can make it work. I'm really looking forward to trying to grow some food out here and seeing what we can get to grow and what won't grow and how much I really don't know about high altitude gardening in a colder climate. But um, anyway, uh, I just, you know, things that are going on in the world here lately have just got me thinking, you know, what, what can I, what should I be doing to, um, you know, to preserve myself here, to preserve contentment, you know, to make sure that I'm doing the right things so that I can remain here at contentment for a long time and remain independent and things like that. Because in case you haven't noticed, uh, I've certainly noticed, inflation is really eating everybody's lunch here lately. Um, and then also, you know, the stuff that's happening in Europe right now, Ukraine, under attack and the world, you know, setting up to cause sanctions, the backlash from that or the financial or economic repercussions of that, you know, where everybody's got to make a sacrifice now and uh, because we're going to, because we're going to starve Russia out or, or whatever. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I'm, I, I try to remain apolitical on these things, but I can't ignore the fact that they can affect you know, my lifestyle here, and yours too. So, I, I came up with a, you know, I was just thinking, what things, what things can I do to hedge against inflation? And, you know, I, I guess I, my mind ran through all the, uh, all the, uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that everybody says. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but, um, at least here where I'm at, the grocery stores and other stores, it seems like the supply chain issues have sort of calmed down a little bit. The shelves are, you know, mostly full again. But what I have noticed is that the things that are missing from the shelves are low-cost items, generic brands, store brands, things like that. And that indicates to me that people that people's budgets are getting tight. You know, they're buying the less expensive stuff because food's getting harder to afford. Gasoline, the same way. You know, even I have begun to curb the number of trips I take into town, not only because it takes a long time to go there and come back, and it really eats into a, you know, a work day or a project day, but also because of gas. Uh, the gas is pretty expensive here. We're about equal with the national average for gasoline here. So, um, but still, you know, it was over $100 to fill both tanks in Rusty the other day. So, and that's, you know, that's, that's a big chunk of money to fill your tank. So, anyway, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm running through my mind, okay, what kinds of things can all of us be doing to, you know, as a hedge against inflation? And so, you know, here they are. Um, you could do what a lot of people are doing right now with high prices, and that is stock up on stuff, you know, particularly food staples, you know, toilet paper, all those kinds of things. Because if the price is going to go up and you have room to store it, buy it now. The same would be true for gasoline. Now, you all know that I have uh, tanks here, you know, where I store gasoline. And... You know that those tanks have a twofold purpose. One is to keep gasoline on hand here, so I can run Dinah, our backhoe, and Dumpy. You know when he needs gas. But then also, the idea behind those was to store a little gas, you know, a couple hundred gallons of gas. So if the price on gas goes way up, you know, I can store it at a cheaper price, put a little stabilizer in it to preserve it, and hopefully keep some gas for a longer time in case there's a spike in prices. 
And uh, that has helped a little bit here, although with one of the tanks leaking, I haven't had much of a chance to develop that. Um, so that's, that's one thing. You know, you can, you can buy now at a lower price and store it. Um, um, another thing that you can do is you can sell some things that you have. If, uh, if inflation is, is uh, driving up the value of some things you own, you know, you use car that you don't use or something like that, and you want to get rid of it, it's just costing you insurance and it's sitting there on the side of the driveway and you never drive it, you can sell it and uh, gain a little money and take that money and invest it in something. Um, that, so that's another idea. You could buy uh, commodities or precious metals just a little at a time uh, when the price is low. Or buy the dip or, or swing trade or you could short the market or do any number of you know, things uh, financially uh, in terms of investing uh, in ways that you think will you know, get you a better value and sort of preserve some of your capital. Precious metals can be good uh, because they provide, you know, they have an intrinsic store of value. That's kind of nice. I'm not a fan of Bitcoin just because it's too volatile. Um, if I could use it as a medium of exchange, you know, like a currency, that would be good, but very few people take it. Uh, and as volatile as it is, you know, imagine if you bought, if you held on to dollars um, and the value of your dollar went up you know, tenfold one day and then drop tenfold the next. Well, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I mean, that's sort of how Bitcoin is. And so I, I, you know, for me, the jury's out on Bitcoin. I just don't know what to do there. Um, but, you know, you could hold on to precious metals, silver and gold. They're less volatile. Um, they, they have their own, you know, intrinsic store of uh, value. And uh, so, and they, they could be, uh, in tight situations, it could be used as, as money. So you could start a business because in starting a business, you can write off a whole bunch of stuff off your taxes and avoid you know, paying taxes and still have something that supports you. Um, so that's another option. But I think that probably the best hedge against inflation going forward in the Western world is going to be building community and friendships. And what I mean by that is start helping one another because prices are gonna become so high that people will not be able to afford a, lot, a great many things. They won't be able to afford to pay the mechanic $1,000 to fix their car. They won't be able to um, you know, afford the deductible on their insurance plan to replace their roof. They won't be able to afford, uh, you know, to fill their tank every week if inflation gets really bad. So probably the best hedge, in my opinion, against inflation would be having friends and family, building a community, encircling yourself with folks that, bo that both you can help and who can help you. You know, there are, there are two minds um, uh, regarding debt in, in an economy like this where they're printing money so fast, you want to spend money quickly before its value drops. And you want to trade it for something that you'll use or, you know, uh, you know need or, or something like that. Because the, the value of your money drops so quickly that uh, you know you may not be able to get that item again, and and that extends to debt. There's one school of thought that says, hey, in an inflationary situation, run up all your credit cards as fast as you can and max them out, because uh, when your money eventually becomes so worthless, they will end credit, and so they'll they'll cut off your credit, and so go out get all the things you need now, buy it all on debt. You know, that kind of stuff. And then the other school of thought is, you know, get out of debt. And then, you know, debt won't be an issue. Uh, I mean, I suppose there's something to be said for both those schools of thought. I'm not uncomfortable with debt, but I prefer no debt.
But it seems pretty clear to me that we are entering a time in the Western world where consumption, like we have been doing it, uh, is gonna is gonna it's gonna shrink. It's gonna go away. People will be doing more things by themselves and for themselves. So. Uh, you know, more people will be working on their own cars because they can't afford a mechanic because it takes more dollars to pay them. Uh, more people will be growing a garden because produce is getting expensive at the store and the quality is suffering. More people will be working on their own houses instead of hiring contractors and things like that because it's, you know, it's less expensive to do so. Um, people won't People, I don't, people may not be buying new cars here pretty soon. And as expensive as used cars are, I mean, people won't be buying cars, period. <laughs> After a while, I fear. So, I think we'll be doing more things for ourselves. Now, in coming to contentment, that was partly my goal. I, I want to be closer to the things that sustain me. I want to do more things for myself. I'm tired, I was tired of paying people to do things for me while I slaved at an eight to five. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the motivation for coming to contentment was to be closer to the things that, that sustain me, even if that means that I got to continually fix a broken backhoe to get things done. But you know what? That's also an incredible opportunity. And I think this is the real point of my video today. This is a real opportunity to build community with your neighbors, friends, like-minded people, um, because it won't be too long before all of this starts hitting us hard, I fear, with the inflation. And, you know, it's, it's far more fun doing it with a friend or in a group than it is doing it by yourself. So, you know, next time a hailstorm blows into town and tears up your roofing, instead of hiring a roofing company, you may consider, uh, you know, just getting together with your neighbors and going around to each other's roofs and help each other replace your roofs. We'll do yours first, and after that we'll do mine, and we'll do Joe's, and, you know, whatever. Times like these are when... You know, people need to come together and help each other and really build one another up, encourage one another, and help each other. You know, there, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, Oh, no man anything but to, but to love one another. And so if we're just, if we look for opportunities to help people who have a need, if we, if we, you know, seek to build that kind of community and those relationships, it will come back to you in spades. It really will. And that is far more valuable than any gold, silver, assets, or anything else that you can amass to hedge against inflation. Because, folks, I think the days are coming when we're going to need each other more and more than we ever have. You know, affluence and a raging economy has uh, has a negative side effect. And that is that when you're doing well uh, financially, you don't need anybody's help. You know, you can pay someone to do it for you. Or you can get insurance to pay for it, or something like that. But, you know, when things are tight, you need people. You need help. You need people with know-how and who are willing uh, to help you. So, you know, I think of another scripture that says, uh, if a man would have friends, he should show himself friendly. In other words, be a person who reaches out. Um, and then you will have a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's the proverb. So, uh, to me, those are the best hedges uh, against inflation. Building community, building friendships, loving on and helping one another. Um, you know, those of you who have adult kids, you may see them coming back uh, because it is just so hard to afford to live out there. And, and whether you like it or not, I mean, 
you're loving on people. You're building community. You're building relationships. And it will come back to you 50-fold, I promise. So, I don't know, for whatever you think that's worth, that's my little nugget today. I hope you all have a great week or next couple of weeks or whatever until I get another video out. And um, please let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. And if you have any cases where you can share, you know, where community has helped you in that way, uh, that would be great. That would be very encouraging to me. So anyway, I hope you all have a great time and uh, take care.